and welcome to episode two of Treasure Hunting with Catherine. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about estate sales. I've just come back from a pretty fabulous estate sale, um, and this is the hall here. Um, let me move this a little bit so you can you can get a good look of what we've got here. Um, I spent fifty two dollars today, and I'm pretty excited with what I got. Um, let me tell you a bit about estate sales. Um, what what an estate sale is, it's like a huge giant yard sale, um, but it's in someone's house. It's pretty cool. I, I stumbled on them by accident when I was looking for yard sales, and I just turned up at an estate sale and found everyone lining up there, and I was just amazed by the whole thing. Um, in my neck of the woods, estate sales are usually on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, sometimes on Sundays. Um, I love it when they're on a Thursday. That gives me extra time. Um, usually Fridays are the best days. That's when you have loads of estate sales. There were about 10 today um, in San Diego. The way I find them, I go to um, a website called estatesales.net. Let me show that to you. Um, this is what I do. I don't know if that's going to show up. Hmm. I don't think that's showing up. I'll, I'll have to put a link into it. Um, but I go to estatesales.net and I can do find sales near me. And today there was, as I say, about 10 of them. There's also estatesales.org that has quite a few listed. That doesn't tend to have quite as many. That has one or two. And also I think it draws Craigslist um, and it gives you a few from there, which is kind of cool if you want to find some that are a bit more low-key that don't have all the dealers lining up. It's also a good idea to look on Craigslist for yourself and do a few searches for estate sales, rummage sales, library sales, whatever you can think of. Um, because the dealers, a lot of the time they get lazy. They just go to the things that have big adverts or they're following signs on the road. So if you can uh, have a look on Craigslist and find an estate sale on Craigslist, you might be one step ahead of the game. The other thing with estate sales is often you'll find the very professionally run ones, they've they've checked the price of absolutely everything. They've compared it all to eBay and they've priced things very close to eBay prices. You, it's hard to find a bargain when you go to when you go to some of the very upmarket sales. So today, um, I looked through the list of sales and I narrowed it down. There were two that I was thinking of. Um, one said it was a 22,000 foot palace. Wow, in a really nice area here. I was so tempted because who doesn't want to go and look around a 22,000 foot square palace? What's kind of cool about estate sales they're fun. There's a story, um, and they every single one has a lot of character. Because the sad thing with estate sales is that usually they come around because of someone's change of circumstance. Sometimes someone's died. Sometimes they've moved into a nursing home. Sometimes they're just downsizing. Sometimes it's a divorce. Anything that could make a person need to sell a lot of their belongings very quickly. Um... So they're often very interesting. You'll you'll find each estate sale has a different character depending on who the person was or is um, and what their house is like. Some are in very upscale neighborhoods. Um, I've been to some in places like La Jolla in, in California, in San Diego, that I'm just like, wow, you, you just want to take a picnic and sit and enjoy the view because they overlook the beach or the mountains. Um, others... I, I, I went to one estate sale, um, and gosh, it was it was an interesting one. It, it was billed as a hoarder sale. Now, I like hoarder sales on the whole, because um, with a hoarder sale, there's usually so much stuff, and they need to move it. And they don't even have time to begin pricing it compared to eBay or, or compared to like the big auction sites. Excuse me, I need coffee. It, it's been a long day. I was up early. So, sometimes with hoarder sales, really good stuff. In fact, the one I ended up going to today was billed as a hoarder sale. I've been to some where the great thing with hoarder sales is sometimes a lot of the stuff is still in boxes. People just keep this stuff. They pile it up, pile it up, pile it up, and they never open it, which is brilliant. I mean, you, you can sell this stuff on Amazon. Things like 
an old Family Feud electric game. Um, this is actually the most expensive thing I bought today. Um, but I was pretty happy with it. it it's pretty cool. It's all still sealed. Um, I bought it for $6. It's selling... On eBay, it sells for about $15. On Amazon, it's selling for about $45. Now, it doesn't have a super high rank. Um, but it'll, it'll sell. It'll definitely sell by Christmas. Um, so I figured it was worth a $6 investment to get $40 back. I thought I thought that was a pretty good deal. Um, so I, I picked that one up. Um, hoarder sales, though. So I, I went to one hoarder sale. It was pretty crazy. I, I think the family had just been hoarding stuff since the 1960s or the 1970s. Because I found um, like vinyl dolls that, and little Cupid dolls and oh what did, what did I find? There was a lot of collectible stuff. I, I bought an Obama train that was in its box um, and I think that was my best sell, sale from, from that particular hoarder sale. But oh my gosh it was so dirty. It was so dirty and upsetting that I really couldn't stay long. They had a whole garage just full of Cabbage Patch toys. It, it was kind of weird, like you walk into this garage and it's literally piled with Cabbage Patch dolls. The problem was most of them were really dirty, really dusty, gross. There were rats. I, <laughs> I couldn't stay very long. So I grabbed a few things that I saw were still sealed in their packs that I could clean up. I didn't touch any of the plush toys. There was jars of marbles, there was buttons, there were beads, there were so many things that normally I would have snatched up and done something interesting with. I just felt like I was going to catch something. That that was probably the worst um, hoarder sale I've been to. And if I was going to do something like that again, I would wear gloves, I would take a mask, I would be very, very careful. It was a gold mine if you were willing to dig and if you were willing to clean. But I think there's easier money to be had. I, I think there's easier money to be had than that. Conversely, a lot of the really um, upper class sales, the, I, I'm not an antiques person. I wish I was. I wish I knew a lot about antiques, jewellery, art, because the furniture, we know these are the high end things. These are the things where you can, you can make a lot of money if you really know what you're doing. Um, the problem is there's a lot of outlay on those. Um, you have to, people know that antiques and jewellery are, are worth a lot of money, so they tend to price them accordingly. You can still get a great deal if you know what you're doing, especially at estate sales. I mean, I always see people make a beeline for the jewellery. That's not really my thing. I'm a treasure hunter. I look for, I spent $52. I bought a huge pile of stuff that most people would say is junk. I'm kind of honest about this. So... You know, I, I can work at pretty much any sale because at the really upper class sales, I tend to go for books. I tend to look for books because those are usually priced low and everyone's busy looking at the art and the furniture and the jewellery. Um, I also go for perfume because it's amazing. People always underprice vintage perfume for whatever reason. It's usually sat there in the bathroom for one or two dollars a bottle and I've had so many bottles of perfume that are discontinued that people will, will pay great money for. They'll pay eighty, ninety dollars for a really great bottle of perfume. Um I picked up a Laura Biagiotti Venezia a couple of weeks ago, but I can't let it go because that was my favourite perfume in the nineties. So I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. I'm I'm torn. Um because I've been looking for that perfume. But I know it'll sell for ninety dollars on eBay. But I bought it for four dollars. So oh, I'm 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 torn on that. I guess perfume's my thing. Which um gives gives me something to, to talk about. Um when I used to take writing classes, I was always taught write about what you know. Um just you'll always have more passion there for what you know and you'll have more attention to detail when it's something you know and I think the same is really true um, in, in going to a sale like this there are certain things that I know um, perfume I kind of know, books I kind of know probably your thing will be different you might know tools really well, you might know art supplies um, needlecraft is another one kitchen, kitchen supplies 
Some people can spot a cast iron pan or Fire King mugs or Pyrex or something like that. People know these things. Of course you can learn them. I, I mean, I've been just learning like crazy over the last couple of years. And one thing I love about estate sales, I feel like every single one is an education. I learn about what people were interested about in about 20, 30 years ago. And it's like particularly interesting for me because I, I grew up in another country. So it's kind of cool seeing how people lived in the US in the 70s or in the 80s. And you get a sense of that when you go and see houses and see all the stuff for sale. So that, that's something I really enjoy about estate sales. I think they're probably my favorite thing that I go to um, just because they're so interesting and there's always a story there. So now I've said that, I have to say, there's also a lot of money to be made in things you don't know. So I was standing in line today at this crazy sale that I went to, um, and I saw these boxes, and I'm like, oh, hey, a sealed box. I can never resist a sealed box. If it's a sealed box, it means I can probably sell it on Amazon, which means it's probably really good money. It's good selling on eBay, even better selling on Amazon. The prices are almost always higher. In fact... We talked about this family feud game. So I said it sells for about $14, $15 on eBay. It sells for $45 on Amazon. There's an arbitrage opportunity right there. You can buy on eBay, sell on Amazon. A lot of people do that and do it very successfully. Not really my thing. I wish it was actually because I think it would be kind of easier to get things delivered and sent out without having to go and, and trawl around. But I kind of like the thrill of the treasure hunt, the physical treasure hunt. Um, so back to these. These are replacement filters for drinking water systems. I know nothing. I know nothing about tools. I know nothing about mechanical things or elect bloke things. Bloke things. Man things. I don't know. So... I was looking at them because I'm standing in line and there's a ton of stuff there. So I, I looked it up on eBay. I'm like, oh, there's a number here, MPC6. $56 new on eBay. Hey, and they sell. So I've got this one and I found another one. This one's not sealed, but it's still in the bubble wrap. It looks cool. I have no idea what it does. It filters your drinking water. Awesome. Someone needs that. To find out how much something's worth, just go to eBay, look at the completeds. That's the clue. Just always look at the completeds um, and look at the sold. It's really, um, it's about the sort. You can sort. So when you look at your completed listings on eBay, so I typed in MPC6 filter and I looked at the completed listings. If there's a lot of unsold ones, that's a bit of a red flag. That means a lot of people have been trying to sell it. They didn't, they priced it too high. Look at the sold listings and see what it's actually sold for. Look at the prices. Often there's quite a bit of a range. Um, at Christmas, gift items particularly, they'll, they'll tend to price a bit higher. So the prices will be higher seasonally. They may be higher just because there was only one person selling them at that particular time. There may be some really low prices just because someone sold it really low and someone snapped it up. Um, but research your prices. Research them carefully. I tend to... There's a lot of pricing strategies on eBay. I tend to always price high and wait because I have a lot of stuff to list. I have a lot of stuff listed. I would just price it high, wait and be happy when I get a good sale because I can be like, yes, I can't believe how much I got for this thing. Um, and I tend to buy everything fairly cheap. So I have a lot of stuff to list. I have too much stuff to list. Um, I kind of look like a hoarder myself. That's why I do my pictures outside. Um, <laughs> but yes, this um, I tend to price high. Um, a lot of other people, they like listing. They can list really fast. They've got it down to an art. Price low, get it out the door. Because if you can sell a bunch of stuff for three, four times what you, you bought it for, which is very easy to do with the state sale stuff and rummage sale stuff, great. Get that machine going and send it out, send it out. Um, I, I would like to get on board with that. I, I wish I had more time to list um, because I, I'm very envious of the people who are really fast listers. I'd, I'd like to be on board with that. It's pretty cool. So price what you're happy with. Price high if you want to or, or price at a place where you think you can get it out. But do check what other people are selling things at because if you've seen, say, 
I mean, I talk about Starbucks mugs. There are some that just don't sell that well. And while you might wish, you might wish that they'll sell, if there's four that haven't sold at $10, it's probably not worth pricing at 30 and hoping. It might be. I don't know. It, it It's your strategy. And you have a lot of choice in this. But but educate yourself in, in, in the completed and the sold listings. <clears throat> so, um, more coffee. There's always coffee. Las Vegas. This wasn't a yard sale fine. I, I, I kind of feel like I'm cheating. But it's my favourite mug. So, um, let's go on with what, what I actually found today at the estate sale. So, as things go, this was a fairly typical sale. Um, it was there was it was more packed than than many sales. It was it, there was a lot of stuff and there was a lot of junk. Like just it was clean, it was organized, but a lot of just stuff. Um, <clears throat> you've got your Ziploc bags and Reynolds wrap and oh, I just a lot of stuff. Um, there was also some really really good stuff. Um, the first place that I went was. Um, I found a little attic room, and I was first in line, luckily, this morning, which was pretty cool. Um, it, it was a 10 o'clock sale, which was a bit later than usual, so I had time to get up there. And it was kind of out of the way. It was in a gated community. Um, so the first place I went once I got into the sale was um, a little book room up in the attic. And it it seemed pretty quiet. The The dealers didn't notice it straight away, and they got distracted with other stuff. So I had a pretty clear run. Um, and I got a lovely pile of books, mostly um, Jewish reference books. So I got um, this one, which let's ha let's have a look at uh, the barcode on this. The other thing with this sale today, I was pretty much flying blind. It was in a really um, blacked out zone for for the internet. Now people who who use um, offline databases for books. They they do fine. Um, for me, I tend to use Scam Power or Profit Bandit, um, and it's tough if you don't have access to the internet, which I was struggling with. So I bought a lot of books. Um, they priced them at a dollar or fifty cents each. I mean, I bought this beautiful book for a dollar. Um, the cheapest I'm seeing has a fifteen dollar ninety six payout. Um, and it's selling new with an eighteen dollar payout. So for a dollar, that's that's pretty good going. Um, this one, I think. Let me have a look at this one. This uh, this book scans in. Um, oh, a seventeen dollar minimum payout on that. So and these are high ranking books. This one has a rank in the top thousand. So really happy with these books. I've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, about eight or nine books I bought this morning, um, and they all um, had prices above ten dollars uh, on on Amazon. So really happy with that. I'm going to send those all into Amazon. I bought them without being able to scan them. Really, I scanned one of them outside in the garden, but the rest I bought without scanning them, just because I didn't have the service. And I did fine. They were all, um, there's essential Judaism, um, there's a book about the Torah, um, the prophets. So they were all religious reference books. It's a great topic. Um, with books, I tend to stay away from the fiction. Anything like Oprah's Book Club or Reader's Digest or anything that's oversaturated, I would just stay away. The only thing I'd say, if you can get a whole series, like say the whole Harry Potter series, that's what that's probably worth picking up if you can get it really really cheap but on the whole you want to look for reference books um, non-fiction textbooks are hit and miss textbooks if they are uh, recent textbooks can be awesome especially technology or IT or programming ones if they're recent those can be a gold mine they can be 30 40 50 dollars or more um, textbooks that are more than say five years old or a few editions old they might not be worth anything. The ranks might be terrible. Textbooks are dodgy. But reference books, especially um, ones that have a university publisher. If they say university press on the back, like Cambridge University, Harvard, York, any any university published book, that's probably going to be worth a look. Um, the other thing to be careful of is the condition. 
always have a look inside see if it's got tons and tons of highlighting you can probably sell it in acceptable condition but the price will be lower um, and be careful about that because some people don't read the condition notes or they can't see the condition notes on their mobile phone so they might pick up the book and go wow that's got an awful lot of highlighting in it. it's not looking good so they might not be super happy about that so be aware of condition um, those are my notes on books so I didn't I'm pretty happy I spent $55 I've made it back on books already because we know we've got $18 there and we've got $20 here and there's several $10 there so we've already made our money back just on the books so everything else is kind of oh and we've got the filters so that was $56 each so what else did we pick up oh I picked up some fun things so often I'll just pick up stuff just because I'm curious or it's fun or if I know I've made my money back on something like that's just like money like books I mean the books are good money they, they're, they're easy you send them in they sell it's great so once you you know you've made your money back on something like that I tend to experiment and pick up things that I'm not sure about just because I'm curious so I got this bag of buttons for two dollars I thought it was fun um, you never know what you're going to find in bags like these. I love them. I um, I tend to pick up bags of buttons, badges, patches, uh, beads, um, embroidery thread. I just like little bags of things because you never know what you'll find. And hey, I'm looking in here and there's some pretty cool stuff. Um, okay, these are cool. There's, I saw these through the bag and I was like oh hey dare that's kind of retro the hipsters are like that and people seriously that they, they still do dare they, they, they still stand outside with dare posters um, dare to say no to drugs is a good message check these out I didn't see these Yogi Bear doing dare wow these, these are good these are good things what else is here on July the 3rd I'm going back to the future Wow, it's an original Back to the Future badge. This is so cool. Remember this whole bag was $2. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got um, I Heart Granada. I don't know about that, maybe. Um, a Nice Jewish Girl. That would probably sell. Um, Disneyland Grad Night, 1983. Were you there? Do you remember it? Someone might. And... Wow, it might bring back cool memories, or they might be a Disney completist. Um, Kodak US Olympic Team 1984. That's pretty cool. I've got some other Olympic stuff from around then as well. So I, I think we can we can bunch some of this stuff together. We can put the dare things together, and I think we've probably got. I don't I don't know. I'd have to do the research on it, but I I think there's money to be made in those. Um, the Back to the Future. That's a cool bit of memorabilia. It's, it's really in at the moment as well. People people are always talking about Back to the Future. It's just one of those cool movies that just doesn't date. Um, so I pick up things like this. I, I've picked up like, I don't know, I got a, a NASA patch that I was just standing in line at, at an estate sale. And I was just like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, it was a Coca-Cola NASA Space Camp patch. And I think I got it for 20 No, I think the guy just gave it to me. He was like, oh, you can have that. That's nothing. And I sold it. I don't know about twenty dollars so you can the the cheap stuff is sometimes treasure like it, it's often there's things that are overlooked um, so I, I'm pretty happy with that that's that's just an example of um, like very little things that are kind of fun buttons I, I love buttons I once bought a dollar bag of buttons and I think I sold it it was over a hundred dollars just for a bag of really cool buttons um, this doesn't work for just the basic buttons, like shirt buttons, but it does work for really interesting sort of military or designer buttons, anything like that. Um, I hope I'm not losing the light too much. I hope you can still see me. I think I'm here. Um, I'm just seeing that the sun's going down a little bit there. Um, perfume. I picked up quite a bit of perfume today. I haven't researched it yet, but I figured it was worth a gamble. Um, I like perfume a lot. I've, I usually do well with it, especially if it's something I haven't heard of. If it's obscure, great. Um, Avon, don't touch it. Just 
<laughs> I, I got sucked in by Avon so many times when I, when I first moved here and I started going to these sales. I was like, oh, what a pretty bottle. Wow, that's so cool. It's, it's, it's perfume and it's shaped like a turtle. I still have that bottle of turtle Avon perfume. Why did they make perfume that's in a turtle bottle? It's awesome. It looks cool. <clears throat> it's collectible. The problem is everyone collected it and everyone kept it. So sometimes it, it's kind of backwards, but things that are collectible, everyone held on to them. It's like Beanie Babies, classic example. Everyone held on to Beanie Babies. They all thought they were going to be a gold mine, so they held on to them. What you want to find is the stuff that no one held on to. Just the weird stuff, the, the oddball stuff, the stuff that someone might like now but didn't value back then they just got stuffed in the back of a cupboard so when you go to like a, a hoarder sale or a big sale I rummage I rummage a lot I love mystery boxes and bags and closets and I, I find all the weirdest stuff I love digging for weird stuff so <clears throat> I need coffee for this one hold on talking about weird stuff this, this is where it does get weird. So, if you have a nervous disposition, you may want to skip this next bit because I went to the bathroom at this sale to see what was there because I always look for perfume, so I always head to the bathroom and see what I can find. There are things that sell on eBay that you would just say, what? Why? I try not to think about the why. I've got a sticker on me. That's off from, from the uh, book there. Um... I try not to think about the why, but let's have a look at these. Hospital size Modus feminine napkins. Everyone ignores this sort of thing. Um, $2. Um, even worse. Um, beltless mini pads. 50 cents. You can kind of see where this is going. I looked up these Modus napkins on eBay. A 12 pack sold, one sold for $50, another one sold for I think $96. Those are 12 packs. I picked this one up today. It's a 24 pack, it's still sealed. I picked it up for $2, it was originally $4.69 in Target. And it's got a very fetching nurse who's not at all scary and not a little bit creepy on on the box. I picked it up for two dollars. That's a 24 pack. We know that 12 packs, all of them have sold. One sold for fifty dollars, one sold for ninety dollars. How much can we get for the 24 pack? Yay! Plus we've got the other bits and pieces here. There were a few other feminine products that I bought, but you get the picture. I don't know why people want them. I'm not going to ask. I'm probably going to set it up as a private auction on eBay. Because people buying this sort of thing might not want um, their names associated with, with products like this. So you can set up a private um, auction. What it means, everyone can still see your listing. The name of the bidder is kept private. You can see it but other people can't. So it's it's often a good idea if you're, if you're selling something that you think people might be a bit embarrassed or a bit shy about to set up a private auction for that. But I was really happy with this find. So bathrooms, not just for perfume. It's pretty cool. Um, also on the topic of um, female products, I guess, um, <clears throat> I got a lot of stockings. I thought these were kind of cool. They were 50 cents each. Very retro there. Oops. Very retro. Um, I, I got them because they were interesting patterns, interesting colours, pink, blue, um, and this one. This is just the coolest thing I've seen for 50 cents. Um, oh, I knocked my perfume over. Um, let's have a look at this one. Stockings, 50 cents. Mount Rushmore. Someone's going to love that. You just know there's going to be like a Kesha fan out there who goes, wow, Mount Rushmore on stockings and with the current legging craze, the bidding, I'm going to set those up as an auction. Often, usually I do buy it now just because I, I want to set my price and get my price. With those, I might do an auction just for fun. I paid 50 cents for them. Let's see what happens with them. Let's see where they go because, wow, vintage Mount Rushmore stockings. I have never seen that before. I don't think they'd suit me. 
I don't really want to fit a president on my leg. Ah, uh, let's see what else we had here. On that note, wow. The, the, this show might get weirder and weirder. I, I'm, I'm going to try and keep it on a nice, happy level. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sorry for weirdness. Um, but it's educational. Cute lovers, people. These are awesome. Um, anything... I, I really like party supplies. I really like um, cards, greeting cards, gift wrap, anything like that. I'm really into those sort of things, especially if they have cute characters. Things like uh, strawberry shortcake, trolls, you know the little Norwegian trolls? Those are pretty cool. Anything that has those on, the toys are great, the toys are awesome. But if you can find things um, that have those characters on, you're probably looking at... I don't know, a, a, a decent sale. I, I, I know that I can sell these for at least $10, hopefully more. Um, I've actually got another box of these inside, so I, I might put them together and do a lot. Um, that's another cool thing that you can do uh, with eBay. If you see little bits and pieces around, um, what you can do is just collect them, especially things like buttons, badges, um, what other things? Things like embroidery thread, sewing supplies, rubber stamps. Um, those are always great. If you can find rubber stamps at a cheap price, but people tend to know the price of those. Any little things. It's, it's good to collect them up and then you can put them together and group them as a cool lot. Um, I learned a cool thing this week about, it's called knolling or nolling. Um, and it's the art of arranging things very nicely at right angles with space in between. I think I'm going to post a link to that because I was really taken by this. I thought it would be a cool way of, of actually displaying things um, on eBay. Um, another thing I've done on eBay is I Pinterest. Uh, I pin all of my interesting um, things on eBay. And I, it, it's really fun when you see people repinning them. So those buttons I, ha I had listed, I, I put those on Pinterest. And I had a really nice pretty picture of them, just lots of glittery shiny buttons. And it got repinned. It got repinned several times. Um, and when you see that happening, you know that you're getting marketing. People are, are looking at these and they're sharing it with their friends. And you get the viral effect. So it's always worth taking a moment just to pin things. It's easy. It's super easy. There's a pin option in eBay. You just click that little pin button and you're away. You, you, can, you can Pinterest to your heart's content. So do think about using Pinterest. You can also use Instagram. You can probably tweet things. There's, there's a lot of marketing techniques that are very easy outside of eBay and they don't cost a penny. So always, um, that's good advice there. Think about pinning your pretty pictures. So this was pretty much my haul from today. Um, there were other bits and pieces. There were, um, I got playing cards. These were 50 cents each. I thought they were kind of cool. There's the RNLI. I know what this is. I, this is the lifeboat in the UK. Um, a lot of people very interested in the lifeboat organization. Um, it's kind of like the UK Coast Guard. Um, and Kings and Queens of Scotland. That's pretty cool. Um, they're all sealed. So I, I could sell these on Amazon. I could even set up a listing because I'm guessing there might not be a listing for RNLI playing cards on Amazon. But I could set up listings for those, especially as they're sealed and new. So any little things like that, I like picking up and see what I can do with them. So pretty happy with the haul today. We've got the filters. That's probably, hopefully, that's fifty to a hundred dollars on the filters. Um, I'm hoping for ninety to a hundred dollars um, on these pads. Um, the Family Feud game. Eventually, Christmas that might sell forty dollars. Hopefully, um, great books. Really great books. Always keep a lookout for books, um, reference books, n books in nice condition. That was a great buy. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. All right, that's my uh, show on estate sales. Do join me again very soon. I've also got a special coming up on Easter bundling. Um, and we're going to have a treasure hunting website up really, really soon where you'll be able to get the Easter seasonal bundling video. So that's an hour long special that I've put together that will only be available on the website. So do look out for that coming soon. Um, subscribe share, like, tell your friends. Um, I'm really happy that you, you, I'm amazed 
at the response to the first uh, show that I did. Really hope that we can keep this going, that we can grow it. I really appreciate all the comments, the feedback, the questions. I'm going to set up a Facebook so that I can answer questions if you have any, um, or do my best to answer them, or that we can answer each other's questions. Um, would love to see a little treasure hunting community grow up. Uh, it's really, really exciting. I, I'm really, and I'm feeling really motivated to get selling, and I hope you are too. All right, well, thank you very much, and join me again really soon. <laughs>